hour and a half later. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so we're recording. I guess what I'll do, if you want, uh, just to make sure we can go through uh, some of the lists I provided you in the email, you can tell me if you want to remove stuff or add no, stuff. No, 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 no. Just, just go, guy. I'm, I'm easy on this. Wherever you want to go with it is no worries. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, all right, so I'll start. I'll, I'll have a quick introduction. I'll go through the disclaimers. I'll talk about the objective for today, and then I'll introduce you. I'll ask you to give you a little bit of a background on yourself um, and then we'll take it from there. Does that sound good? Sounds good. All right. Uh, before we start, Cliff, really, really, really thank you for, for giving me this interview. This, <laughs> I've been following you for years and I, I just never dreamt I'd get to talk to you, let alone interview you. So thank you so much. <laughs> sure. No worries whatsoever. No worries. All right. Sounds good. So let's start with this. Hello, everyone. I'm JC from Beyond Mystic and today we're interviewing my friend, um, the very, very popular, the infamous <laughs> Cliff High. <laughs> and uh, before we get to that, uh, I just want to start with a list of disclaimers today. Uh, get those out of the way, and then we'll talk about the objective for this call, and uh, we'll get right into uh, the discussion for today. So first disclaimer, uh, anything we talk about here today is not medical advice. Uh, so seek advice from your own doctor. If we do get into finance, uh, please note that nothing we say also should be considered as financial advice. Um, all the information that we're providing in the video today uh, should be considered as read so that either Cliff or myself have researched and read the documentation, the books, and what have you on the subject we're talking. And if that is not the case, we will expressly uh, tell you that what we're about to say is opinion or conjecture. Um, so we're going to go deep and fast on a lot of subjects, guys. So at any time, if you want to pause the video, uh, you know, go into Google, type in the key uh, words of the subjects we're talking about so you can find the news articles and then follow along with us. That'd be great, but we won't go into detail too much in terms of the references. We're going to try to pack as much information as we can in this video and give you some actionables today. Um, so this is a follow-up video to the video I made yesterday, the broadcast uh, to all the Pat Known Martial Arts uh, dojos in Canada, where we discussed um, the immune system uh, support uh, methodology that we've been hearing now from uh, uh, Chinese uh, traditional medicine folks. And so we're gonna go a little bit deeper into that today. So as you notice too, the next point on my disclaimer is linguistics. I am French, <laughs> and uh, so the problem is sometimes is I think in French and I'm translating as I'm having a conversation. So Cliff, I know you're very anal, I put that in quotes about linguistics, so if you see me struggling on words, just jump in there and, and add the sure. word for me. <laughs> okay, and uh, so Cliff, did you have any disclaimer on your own that you want to add to, uh, to the interview? Uh, that it's for adults, we have to treat things realistically or we will misunderstand what we're dealing with and we will potentially make fatal errors because it is a adult material um it has to be approached with an adult hard mindset and so emotions must be held in check and must be uh, relegated to the side because we must be first rational and reasonable very good. Thank you for saying that because there is a lot of fear mongering out there, um, both in mainstream and also in, in, on uh, social media. And it's our job to kind of decipher through all of that, not get affected by the emotions and really stick to the facts and, and try to see through the propaganda and, and the fog of war. So, so thank you, Cliff. So, so the, fact, the facts will set us free in this. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, so the objective of the call today um, so we're, we're coming at this from a martial arts perspective. And so we took the word Lin Sil Dai Dar, and that in, uh, in Chinese martial arts means simultaneous attack and defense. And so this is where we want to bring you strategies today, both on the, on the front of the defense, which is your immune system, and then also to talk about the attack where that gives you opportunities to thrive and to survive and maybe to even prosper through all of this. So there is a silver lining in all of this as long as you're prepared and you have the facts. So this is the objective for today. And again, not fear monitoring. We're not getting into any uh, enticing panic. As Cliff said, it's, a, it's, it's really an adult conversation. And I'm sorry, uh, ahead of time, we're not gonna be sugarcoating words. <laughs> Just so you know, so if you have trouble with that, guys, <laughs> maybe don't watch the video. But I really recommend you watch it and go through it and then do your own research. 
Okay. And uh, finally, we want to rally the troops. We want to build community of like-minded warriors uh, who have the same rational mindset. who can look at this and take rational decisions for themselves, for their family, their loved ones, and, and also their community and their neighbors. That's really what this video is all about today. So now let's get into the introduction part. Again, I can introduce you, Cliff, for like a whole hour. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. get into that. If people can do their research, they can go to Twitter. Uh, it's Cliff underscore high, I believe is your handle. Is that correct? correct. And, that's, and also halfpasthuman.com is your website where you also still have data, I, I presume. I have, I have old stuff there. I haven't updated it in quite actually a year. So, so okay. you know, we're on to other things now. We've got to use Twitter and the more immediacy of the uh, social media to accomplish this. Absolutely. Okay, so for today, guys, uh, I wanted to concentrate Cliff's maybe background in terms of him as a self-described radical iconoclast. I really like that. <laughs> Obviously, the martial arts perspective that he brings, a lifetime of study, um, the predictive linguistics, and also how universe has provided him opportunities and challenges that made them go down this path of studying um, the immune system and how to take personal responsibility for your health. So maybe Cliff, if you want to just briefly go sure. through the points. Okay, so um, I started martial arts uh, when I was 11 years old. I was uh, in Germany. It was um, what was called Kano Jiu Jitsu. This was before the formalized adoption of um, Kano Judo. And um, before we became Judo players, uh, I was taught at a military base in Germany, and I was too small, too thin to effectively, I was 11 years old, I was a, a little shrimp, right? And so uh, uh, the sensei uh, had me do yoga, and then I spent a year uh, doing ukimi, uh, being the person that is thrown, okay? So it taught me a whole lot about falling, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it also taught me that I really like the grappling arts. I went through various different kind of the uh, striking arts, Shotokan, Shotokai, Taekwondo, uh, Goju, a uh, number of others as my um, uh, father's uh, position in the military took us to various different military bases and that was what was available at that spot. Eventually I got to a point where I was on my own and I settled into Aikido and I've been in Aikido Ka for uh, 40 plus years and um, actively studying under various sanseis, uh, sansei cook, among others, um, uh, for 30 plus years. I never tested, okay? So I'm the most proficient white belt you'll ever see. And it was a, it is a, um, uh, a particular philosophical stance with me. And Beginner's I'm, mind. Correct. Beginner's mind. Mind. Correct. And so uh, I'm very good. Um, especially for my frame size, and I've got a shihonagi that will rip the arm right out of your shoulder. Uh, so, so, um, <laughs> exactly so. <laughs> so I'm, I'm quite confident, but see, here's the thing. In spite of all of that, in spite of that entire history, I was doing Aikido four and five nights a, a week, for week for years, but during that entire time, I had a cancer. I did not know I had this cancer. I just knew that something was wrong with me. And I would repeat it. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of my own money over two decades with physicians attempting to discover what was wrong with me. And it was never, ever discovered that I had this very large cancer in my colon. And uh, it grew until it uh, basically killed me on July 13th, 2018. And uh, they cut out a cancer that was uh, two and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeters by two centimeters. And it finally caused an obstruction, an obstruction in the bowel and an intussusception uh, that uh, quite actually took me to death. And at that point, I was rejected and sent back because I had more work to do. Uh, thereafter, this was July 13th, Friday, uh, so that's my lucky day in many regards, and I explained that at a really weird mystic level. Uh, but uh, so from that point on, from July until September, it was almost being alive. Okay, so it was really rough those months. But through the 30 plus years that I knew I was ill and I was getting nothing out of the allopaths, I, and my mother was a 50 year nurse, uh, so she was tight in with all the doctors and we, we explored it. I spent hundreds of thousands, my insurance companies might have spent quarter of a million for all I know. Mm -hmm. And never was any result uh, ever effective. And ultimately the cancer presents itself and I keel over. But perhaps it lasted so long 
uh, and I persisted so well around it because I learned TCM in the time. I didn't know I had cancer, so I never attempted to use TCM to treat cancer. I was always attempting to treat whatever the allopath of the moment thought they had identified. You know, liver issues, gallbladder, spleen, they rotated around as to where they thought it was. At one point, ulcers, I guess. I, no, I never, never got that way. But okay. at one point, they tried to shove a stint into me because my enzymes were so whack, out of whack from the cancer that they thought I was having a heart attack. And I kept insisting I was not. They said, oh, you're going to die if you walk out of here. And I signed their, their form, walked out, and here I am. But, right. but in any event, the point is that I learned very deeply the fundamentals of uh, TCM. Uh, and, uh, and one of the fundamentals is that you always, as a practitioner, know the substances you're recommending. So you take those things, right? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've taken every single thing I might want to recommend, and I've taken a lot of stuff I would not recommend because I've taken it. So, so there's many different um, uh, formulations and so on that are possible to be used at this particular point in, in our human history, all of them deriving from some form of what we can call in a broad sense, indigenous medicine evidence-based medicine that may go back several thousands of years. And I personally have a thousand year rule. If humans have been doing it for a thousand years, it'll probably be okay for me. But anything being done in the moment, last 50 years, well, you know. Yeah, that's a good point to bring to another conversation, which is not for today, but about veganism and all that stuff. And we'll leave that aside, but I understand your point, absolutely. Uh, Cliff, maybe we don't need to get into the predictive linguistics per se, but I understand also that you wrote a software way back when that helped you read a lot of data very quickly. And Correct. maybe you can explain a little bit what that was and how that's enabled you to be basically just an information data monster and, and, and giving all that ability to do this research that you're doing. Okay, so I was working for uh, various different companies, Microsoft included, Microsoft Consulting Services. And I noticed that no matter where I went, there was the limiting factor of how fast people could absorb information. Right. So I thought there had to be a better way to plug the information to human brains. And I came up with a software which was patented, which I sold for a while call, that I called Vortex because I couldn't think of anything more appropriate. And it, um, it plowed words into your brain. Uh, I can run it about 3,000 words per minute because I've been using it for a number of decades. Even beginners can get 16, 1,800 words per minute, excepting that we went over to the modern screens and it is so powerful, the, the manipulation that I did with the underlying hardware with that software that it will cause seizures on these type of screens, so I no longer sell that software. I have a truly have an old, old, old um, uh, Windows 98 machine and a Windows 98 monitor when I want to read text. And so, because I can plow through text on that single monitor, um, it works best even on green screens. You know, I mean the old wow. style uh, CRT kind of things, right? Um, and is there still a way for individuals to get that, to purchase that somewhere, or to make that happen? No, no. no <laughs> it would be no. very useful for people right now to because well, there's, there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, there's a problem though. Uh, there was an incident not involving my software, but involving another software that had uh, particular kinds of uh, hardware manipulations that I also had discovered, and this caused 160 uh, children in Japan to have seizures. Mm. And they, they put it in a TV cartoon and it was like, oh, you know, yeah. the targeted brain was not, their brains were not ready for that. Right. So, so I'm, I'm paranoid about releasing it and I no longer support it. Oh, and, yeah. I've, and I've never ported it. There's a trick in the, in the um, uh, presentation of the words to you that uh, you would have, that has to adapt the implementation, implementation to the actual um, technology behind the monitor. And so I've never ported it to modern screens, and gotcha. so it doesn't exist on them. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I understand. Uh, last thing for your introduction, could you speak maybe a little about your introduction to medicinal mushrooms, to Paul Stanley, sure. and how that came about, just as anecdotal to, to build the conversation here, frame here? Sure. I, I ran into Paul Stamets in um, 1978, maybe? Okay. okay, he was he was getting advanced degrees at Evergreen State College. I had a temporary job there as the lab stores manager, so I had to supply him uh, laboratory gear. I had to make the contracts for the people to come in and tune the electron microscopes, all that kind of stuff. So, so I ran into him. 
uh, I had had an introduction to um, uh, mushrooms years before that, though, because I was a consumer of psychedelic mushrooms because I'm a schizotypical individual. Mm -hmm. a, a schizotypical individual is a sociological definition, not a psychiatric one, okay? It right. merely means that you are the surviving sibling of someone who is a full-blown schizophrenic who will die of that condition. Right. And it means that you carry those genes. Something about schizotypicals is that we're constantly self-medicating to try and dampen the emotional and brainstorms that we suffer as a result of these gene combinations. So frequently you'll find that schizotypicals are chain smokers. I, I smoked for 17 years and cut and just decided that was it and cut it off and have not ever smoked since. Go ahead. I remember you made a video, um, a friend of mine, ours had lost uh, somebody important and you made a video about the sensitivity to life and those curves and how you explained that. And maybe I, I can link that in the bottom too so people can go back and look at that. But thank you very much. For yeah. The yeah. And see, so, so I, had a, uh, I have a very unique perspective. Mm -hmm. And it is my contention that individuals such as myself that have schizotypical or schizophrenic conditions have a unique uh, subset of the psychedelic experience that others do not, and that we are able to what I call voyage to hyperspace. Mm -hmm. It was there that I learned uh, in discussion with another being who was hominid but not humid, correct, as to what the vagus nervous system is, how it relates to language, and ultimately how all of that relates to health. Because mm -hmm. right now, it is our vagus nervous system that is under assault by COVID-19. The vagus nervous system is that part of the body that controls how it is hardened and plumped up by the ingestation of all this, the materials that we're likely to discuss today. Mm -hmm. And so this is all intimately connected. And, and so my knowledge of this goes back to those psychedelic journeys that uh, encompassed weeks in the late 60s and early 70s. Very good. Thank you, Cliff. Is there anything else? Uh, oh, oh in, in connection with that? medicinal mushrooms. Okay, oh, yeah. so okay, so as a, an aspect of that, uh, you will notice, for instance, in, just as an aside, if you look at any of the wildlife videos of, um, of primates, when they encounter something new, one, usually male but sometimes female, um, of the group uh, of a gorillas, chimps, or whatever, will take that new stuff and put it in their mouth partially and just sit there. And if you observe these individual primates over the next 45 or 50 minutes, they will go through a process that I know, having been taught it through these psychedelic experiences, of the assay of the molecules and the compounds that are being presented to the saliva. And you can make decisions as to whether this is healthy and risky, healthy and safe, 100% uh, risky, 100% dangerous, etc. by these assays. It is this, what's called tying the molecule, okay, in the Curandero language. The Curanderos are people in the Southern Hemisphere that are indigenous shaman medicine people. Yeah. And they use many of the same techniques I do. And you tie compounds and molecules together as the molecules and the plants themselves direct. So my experience with medicinal mushrooms is greatly enhanced by my having had a great deal of experience with the assaying of the molecules in psychedelic mushrooms, and I've tried a wide variety of subspecies of those, as well as the binding of the compounds. And that's a, a technique where it's very difficult to conceptualize or place in the language, but you basically feel the compounds and analyze them at this body sensing level, and you can sense harmony. And since I have spent 40 plus years in Aikido, which is mind-body harmony, yeah. uh, I got very good at that sort of thing. That's what led me to the conclusions about the current COVID um, and the responses way back in January. I actually thought about this in December, had come to some conclusions in December, but had to wait to see things play out before I started having my ba uh, basic major freak out that's been ongoing since the end of January. Okay. We'll get into that as soon as we get into the topics. Uh, thank you, Cliff. Uh, so for everyone else, um, 
in terms of my background, again, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life too, but I'll try to shorten it just for the purpose of this particular video and the context that we have. Um, I did martial arts as a kid. Also, I had psychic abilities as a kid. I was very sensitive to uh, telepathy and what people were thinking, feeling around me. Um, from the age of 13, after doing four or five years of karate, uh, I went into the Royal Canadian uh, Army Cadets uh, up until the age of 18. And there I focused on two things, um, outdoor survival uh, skills and sharpshooting. And by the end of all that, I was a teacher. I was teaching the new cadets uh, coming in. I wanted to do a career in the military, uh, but as I was coming out of high school, the Canadian government at the time was starting to shut down military bases across Canada. So I was like, this might not be a good career choice if they're cutting all the budgets. So I went into politics, economics, and law. So I, basically, I had a dual major of economics and politics, and also took a law certificate. Anyways, I went into work into politics after that, and um, some of the skills that I learned there are applicable today, and this is why I'm bringing it up in this context, where when a crisis happens in a political world, there's, there's a mechanism that we go through until we get to that six o'clock um, soundbite. And once you know that mechanism, you only have to hear the soundbite and you can retro engineer it, what's the word? Uh, back engineer. Back Correct. engineer the soundbite into what's really going on. And so it's a very useful skill to have today, of course, <laughs> with all the fake news and all that stuff, and to really try to see behind behind the veil of not just the political discourse, but the propaganda and even the matrix that, that is around us. And um, anyways, I retired in 2008 or nine. Uh, I still own a few businesses and do internet marketing. And since then I've been focusing on uh, the other part of my martial arts studies, which is Feng Shen Do. Uh, it's a derivatives of, of Jeet Kune Do. And uh, we also do Sen Shu, which is the traditional Ch uh, Chinese style kickboxing and MMA. And within that, um, for me, it was important to get into the, uh, the, the mind-body-soul um, union. And so that helped me calm my mind down because of all these years in politics and you know, wor working these crazy hours and constantly under stress, I really needed to focus on that. And so today, we are part of a community where I think both Cliff and I, um, that one, have very clear or at least we try to be on the page of, of what's really happening, of having our pulse on, on, on the planet right now. We're doing a lot of work. Um, Cliff obviously reads more than me at the speed you're reading. <laughs> I'm doing my best to catch up here. And I'm really a little bit younger than you, I'm 47. Um, but the, the point of the introduction is, you have before you here, I'm talking to the audience, two people who really study things and who really look at things and who from their own very nature are not we're not sheep that follow the crowd. We're, we're usually the black sheep in the corner doing something else because we're interested in other things. And, the, and in the context now of COVID-19, it's a huge advantage to be out there, to be able to see the bigger picture and not be pushed towards <laughs> the cliff <laughs> as things seem to be progressing. So uh, I guess that's it for the introduction. Uh, cliff, do you have any questions for me before we pass on that? Okay. Uh, so good. now we'll the discussion, uh, again, the, the focus today here is to give, and it's not, it's not just for, uh, obviously, martial artists. We're happy to give this to everyone else, but we're coming at it from that perspective. So, again, we're talking about the defense and, and the attack at the same time. So, in the video I did yesterday, we talked about vitamin C, uh, chaga, uh, in, 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 in like a one-two punch, and then also the vitamin D to boost your immune system. So, today, I'd like to go a little bit deeper into that. Um, um, we, we talked about... Um, para-immunity as opposed to just sitting on our ass and waiting for vaccines that may never come as they never came for uh, SARS and MERS. And so maybe Cliff, what we can do in a short condensed per, uh, version, bring us up to why we're here now with some of these remedies that, that, that came to light. For example, the military bases, you know, hogging all sure. the budgets. Sure, that would, and then right. we'll go a little bit further deep into it. Okay, so I do software engineering. Um, there's very little in these machines that I have not done uh, other than actually manufacture silicone wafers. Okay, never got involved that deep. But I know it all the way down to the primary, uh, what's called the zero ring inside these uh, circuits. So having known all of these, I explore. And so I'm quite comfortable with, with what is called TOR, okay, the onion network. 
This is the alternative to the HTML pages that we're operating on at this moment, the regular web pages. Tor is a very dangerous area because it's the dark web or the deep web. In that area, people are free to post what they want and very, because you cannot be traced if you know what you're doing. If only a little acumen, you can put stuff out there and it can never be traced back to you. Um, uh, so whistleblowers have a tendency to use the dark network in, a, in a, the Tor network, the onion network. It's actually called TOR, the onion router. Um, and you have a Tor browser and you better get VPNs and you better chain the buggers because it's dangerous. But in any event, you can go out there and up until March 1, 11 a.m. my time Pacific Coast, March 1, I had access to the uh, dark web and the deep web that uh, Chinese people were able to post on. At that point, the CCP, the Communist Party of China, uh, cut that and shifted all traffic to China through these two giant mainframes that are doing nothing but scrubbing all of the traffic in and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's reduced the volume, I think, 90 plus percent. Uh, so, but it eliminates all of those leaks that were getting out and embarrassing the Communist Party in their efforts to propagandize this as a disease. So at the time, for the first few months, they presented this to the world as though it was a zootropic um, transmission disease. Right. Uh, animal, 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 human eats animal, human gets it. Right. And it, that is not the case, okay? So under the circumstances, as an adult discussion, I discover, I, okay, so I was actually alerted on December 9th because of a weird phrase that showed up in Xi Jinping's um, speech at that time. Okay, on December 9th, he made a speech that said, and I'm translating very loosely, but, but it's a decent yeah. translation. He's going to say, he says, China, meaning all the Chinese people, not the, not the boundary nation, but all the Chinese people, will be more prosperous after the event. And it's like, okay. And then a few days, then a few days later, I start hearing about the deaths in Wuhan. And then I put out at that point, it must have been like December 13th or something. I dropped a note on the dark web, the deep web. It's actually the deep web, not the dark um, deep web to this friend of mine who went by the name of Joe. And he was an herbalist in Wuhan. Okay. I've dealt with Joe since 2010. I used to buy specimen plants from him because he was a um, uh, licensed uh, by the communist party gatherer of these very rare specimen plants and the in the northwest part of China in their deserts. And uh, he, he was able to sell them out of country. And I bought them because I needed to know in my TCM experience what these plants did when I put them in my mouth and tried to combine them with other, other compounds as I was working towards very specific formulas, um, some of which we're now starting to try and bring to market in spite of all of this uh, craziness around us. In any event, though, so... Uh, Do you mind me to get to that at the end of the... Wait, 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 that yeah. Okay. Um, so Joe um, uh, finally was able to respond to me in, in January. I learned invaluable information from him. But prior to that, I came across a curious set of photos taken from a guy's phone from the third or fourth floor of a nearby building to a northeast um, Navy base in China, in which you can see through the photos pallets of ascorbic acid inside the gates of this Navy base and other pallets, I mean, truckloads of stuff, mm -hmm. almost as big as the buildings behind them. Um, and they were people welding shut the gates to this, this Navy base. And I thought, okay, something's up. And then I looked, I studied the photo, I got out a little loop, you know, the little jeweler's thing, and I studied the photo that was available to me. Now here's the issue. On the, on the deep web, I was always, always paranoid to ever do anything like even a screenshot. Okay, so I never did that. I never did any uh, bringing back because when you do that, you basically break these multiple encapsulations of your IP address and you're exposed for that brief moment in, in what's known as the MAC or the UDP layer. And it is enough that people can track you down should they want, you, want to. And I, I've been fighting for years all kinds of online censorship and people trying to crack and hack my systems and stuff. So I was real paranoid. And at that time, I had no interest in trying to be a documentarian of this, trying to, I didn't know it would develop this way. At that time, I was hoping it would be like SARS-1 and would be limited to a small area of China. I'm, right. I'm of the opinion SARS-1 was the first iteration of this bioweapon. 
in any event. So I made decisions and I started looking instantly. I take vitamin C by the drove. I'm an optimal vitamin C guy. I was trying for 30 uh, milligrams per kilogram anyway, just as an anti-cancer kind of a thing. I've had cancer three times. I'm here, the cancer is gone. So obviously I know to some extent what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the vitamin C, at that point, I started looking at the size of the military base. And then I thought, okay, these guys are preparing for a long haul of massive doses of vitamin C for these people. And, and it's possible you think maybe there's this thing that looks like a submarine in the far background of this photo. So it might be a submarine base we're actually looking at. Okay. And this makes, a, this makes a lot of sense because in those areas, you're pressurized. So you're breathing all the air over and over and over again. And so that would be the worst possible place to get any kind of one of these viruses, right? So at that point, I knew that one thing, that the Chinese Communist Party was reacting as though a bioweapon had gotten out. They were reacting in the early parts of December in massive ways that never went down for SARS, not even at the end of the SARS. And they did it at the beginning of this. So they were spooked right from the get-go. Within the first part of December, they destroyed the the supposed market and eradicate it, burned it to the ground mm -hmm. uh, to eliminate any evidence. And they started destroying evidence all through December, killing doctors, making people disappear that brought this up as they were trying to control the narrative. They were also, at, go ahead. May I just focus on a point for the audience here? What Cliff is saying is very crucial here because for the last number of months, I've seen people on the internet say, oh, it's just a flu, don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. But when I started looking at this, and I have to admit, in the first couple of weeks, uh, I was like, oh, maybe it's just another one of those false flags. I don't want to pay attention to this, blah, blah. And then it started, as soon as I started looking, I'm like, whoa, the reaction is different. The military is acting different. This is, this is not SARS. You know, they've never, <laughs> you know, so it, we, they went from, a, a, you know, saying there's nothing there to now quarantining, quor, quarantining 800 million people. And, and of, of course, now the, the anecdotal evidence about the base is shutting down and, and hoarding all this vitamin C, they were reacting very strongly to something. And so that put me on alert to say, okay, whoa, 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 we need to take a second look at this, be very rational and start really digging. And, and so, so thank you to, for that point, because still a lot of people today, they're like, ah, it's nothing there. Like they haven't been reacting. Yeah. Here's, here's what I say to that, okay? And I saw this and I made this conclusion because if you'd followed what I was doing prior to that, I was translate, getting involved with Boscovich and magnets and UFOs, right? Issues, right? I feel the cool. Yeah, guess where the center of world magnet production is? <laughs> yeah. Hubei province, Wuhan to be specific. Guess yeah. where the center, center is for all electric motor production uh, globally, basically. I mean, it's like 65% of the entire electric motors, Wuhan. And right. they shut down. And so China within, basically, here's, here's my response to anybody that says it's the flu. Okay, I'm saying it's a bioweapon based on the conclusion that I can state as follows. This disease shut down the planet's largest and strongest manufacturing nation in less than two months. It has gone on in less than four months to shut down global trade, to destroy 25 or 30 or 50 years of globalism, and to destroy the political elite's grasp and grip on power. Not only in China, but here in the West as well. Yeah. Political yeah. leaders are falling by the wayside Starts right there. now. Yeah. So, so if it is not a bioweapon, I still think we should react to it as though it is one because it'll do until one comes along. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> so, so, I mean, now, the, next thing, the next thing that really was significant for me was that sometime in January, I was able to get onto the, this is prior to the shutdown in March, I was able to get onto the deep web in China and I retrieved from, from these things that are called irons, it's basically a mailbox, a response that had been left to me uh, by Joe, okay? okay? Joe Wu, okay? And he's probably dead now uh, because he knew too much and he was out doing too much. And I have not heard back from him and I've lost contact with almost, with, well, with all of my Chinese cousins. I was sort of tied into this, this small Chinese uh, clan uh, about 145 people, and I haven't been able to reach any of my contacts since this went down. Over the course of time, they've all ended up not being able to be reached. In any event, though, so uh, Joe responded to an email. He was desperately freaked out, and he told me some things about, he's, he's an herbalist, but he's also, a, he's a, as an herbalist, he's one of the, um, he's an old man like myself. Um, he's one of the um, uh, practitioners 
that uh, is certified to go into hospitals, do TCM work in hospitals, but he's not uh, you know, an allopath or an MD in that regard. But, in, but he's uh, paid out as though he was a physician because he treats patients. And that's the first line of, um, and, and uh, it's the first line of Chinese medicine is this uh, uh, sort of encounter with herbalists and stuff, much more so than here. And it is also what, what passes for um, physical therapy and after uh, surgery treatment and that kind of thing. A lot of people go to their herbalist right after coming out of the hospital for some other kind of a, a stuff, right? So he had uh, a street cred, in my opinion. And I've been dealing with the man since 2010, and I knew what he was thinking and, and um, how it was working. And he told me some very, very key fact, a very key fact, that he had 15 patients, two of which had died of this. The two that had died were young men. They were struck suddenly. They had had the flu and recovered. He treated them for the flu um, using this particular um, TCM um, combination medicine uh, that... Um, uh, plant-based, and I can get into it, it sort of worked, and then uh, at some point later, they, they perished. A week, week and a half. It was sudden for them, and they died. They were both sports players, and he described them as being fit, but recovering from injuries for which he had been treating them. Okay, so he had been sort of like on the physical um, uh, therapy side of it. They may have been martial artists. They could have been soccer players. The translation of this is uh, the best I could get was sports players. But the one thing that he told me that was very remarkable was that none of the 13 other patients that he was treating uh, had uh, succumbed to the disease, and yet they were all older. Um, uh, his oldest patient was uh, 73 and a cancer patient recovering from cancer surgery at that time, and his wife was 72, and uh, uh, he was treating her to keep her uh, physically fit so she could tend this guy at home. They were locked into one of the Wuhan apartment buildings that got sealed up, and they were doing fine, and he had seen them repeatedly and had kept treating them. These were the only two of his patients that were on a particular formulation, but all of them shared one formulation, which was Chaga. Okay, so out of, out of the 13, he had uh, the husband here, uh, but not the wife, on a dual extract of Chaga, okay, an alcohol and water extract which he considered to be supreme anti-cancer medicine. That's how he referred to it. That was his name for chaga. Um, and, um, but his wife was on the lesser form, which was tea, chaga tea throughout the day. And his other patients, one of the others, was also there being treated for um, some kind of liver ailment. And he would, had that person on dual. So two out of the, the 13 had dual extract, the other 11 just had tea. Um, and, the, and Joe also would give them capsules if they had trouble, you know, uh, with tea. There were also, uh, a lot of these uh, were elderly individuals, that is to say, um, the males in China, anybody over 60, likely is a smoker. Mm. And so these were, these were prime candidates to get it. None of these individuals had it. Two people had slight uh, cases of the flu within that 11, and it passed, and there was no big issue for them. Was it COVID? He does not know because none of them ever wanted to report for testing for fear they would be disappeared because it got that bad, right? Mm -hmm. so, I, so I've had no contact with him since then. But as soon as I got that information, I mean, like within hours of that, uh, I started, I knew chaga. I'd been using chaga for 18 months at that stage as an anti-cancer. And I feel usually, like I say, I feel like chewing nails and spitting sparks and steel. You know, it's good stuff. <laughs> Feels good to be a chaga gangster. Okay, right. <laughs> right. So, so, but I started investigating, and that's when uh, a couple of clues came up. There was a Hindu group that did an early sequencing on the COVID uh, protein. What they discovered was that there were that there there are marks of what is called CRISPR. Okay, it's a software that is used to do genetic engineering. Right. It, leaves, it leaves artifacts. I've used the software. I know the artifacts. I found them. I agreed with these Hindu guys. I saw them there as well. They also said there's an HIV inclusion, a SARS inclusion, and a MERS inclusion in a coronavirus envelope. This is why the tests are failing. Okay, As I explained in my Vix Weir video, the, the human body can't see the virus it needs to make an immunoprotein to. So it maps that virus the same way that a primate does, or the same way I do. It 
taste it. It lets that virus come up against some cell, and then that part of it that's on that cell is assayed by the body, and an immunoprotein response is built. But the virus, this virus is kind of tricky because it's not uniform. It's not ubiquitous. It presents to some people the HIV face, to others the SAR face, to others the MERS face. And so you can get three or more potential antibodies or immuno response proteins to the virus depending on which face was presented to you. And you're likely to have many of these different ones in your body based on which part of your body is trying to manufacture an immuno. So it's all a big stew. You never manufacture enough of them to do you any good. But because of, because of this, I had a, had a huge relief, okay? I had suspected since December that it was a bioweapon release, but you can't be sure ever because the stuff coming out of China is all lies. But the one thing I did decide was that it made sense to approach it as a bioweapon until uh, found out otherwise. And, and once I did find out that it was responding to Chaga, I knew why. And, and it's because Chaga has a very unique, uh, not unique among plants, but unique among the medicinal mushrooms, it has a unique protease, protease inhibitor um, for the CL protease that HIV needs to rebuild itself. Right. What, we have to, what we have to understand is that your, your body is hijacked as the virus comes up to it. And the virus comes on up to it and says, basically says to the cell, hey, here's some stuff. Can you replicate this for me? And, and so Chaga says, no, it's got an HIV in it. You can't, no replication allowed. And the, and the virus at that point actually is sort of frustrated because it can't hijack the protease. And at that point, the other antiviral triterpenes and the other chemicals within the chaga come along and stomp the, the, the virus's butt while it's involved in this tug of war, so to speak, over the protease. This is what creates the heat that people that have the disease and take chaga feel. It is actually the heat dispelling the damp of the disease. TCM guys call this disease cold or damp, sticky, and gray. Okay, we can dispute about the various gray, white, or other colors, but nonetheless, this is a TCM description of how it is within your body. So the response to that is to dispel the, the cold with the heat, get rid of the, the stickiness, which is the lung effect, with slipperiness, and I can go into that later, and um, uh, to provide, um, what I want to say, protection against the hijack that it's going to try on these various different surfaces. And the beauty for us is, because it's a bioweapon, we have a path through this shitstorm. Okay? Right. okay, because one thing about bioweapons that people must understand, they are not engineered to kill everybody. They're specifically engineered to have a key so that your people don't get it. Otherwise, what's the point? And so if you, if you can discover the key for the bioweapon, you can neutralize it just like that. They built into this bioweapon a key for vitamin C at a specific high level, probably figuring that nobody on the planet other than 12 people are going to ever get that, that level. And these are bodybuilders or judo players, right? Something right. like that. Yeah. And, and it turns out, that they didn't know that they were building in other keys because they used CRISPR, the artifacts in there, and because they chose this uh, HIV inclusion, they gave us another opening. So it's as, though we're, it's as though we're presented with an attacker who is presenting us not just one, but two opportunities to take, a, take them down, right? They're leaning way forward and they're running full speed. <laughs> <No. laughs> Perfect <So>. Aikido. <laughs> exactly. right please, please, please let me help you to the floor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so very good. We, okay, so what we do is we investigate. We investigate really, really, really deeply and we confirm my suspicions, which I did over the course of the lat latter part of January. And then I started telling people about this. That, that we had a bioweapon, it had uh, one designed in vulnerability, that the key that I could see, which was this relationship with vitamin C, and I found at least one other one. Now I found a couple of others. So for instance, chaga in Latin America, South America, can be replaced with chuchuasi. Does the same thing, has the same HIV, protease inhibition, and there's dozens of more plants 
in South America that do this. And I suspect, okay, so uh, let me just describe strategy for a second. Okay? Right. So the strategy is to not get ill. The strategy is to harden our bodies because we will not be able to avoid exposure because this is a bioweapon and it's designed to be maximally transmitted, maximally infectious for the maximum a possible a time uh, in order to do its job. So in order to do this, we have to harmonize with our bodies and avoid this situation. So I'm not wasting my time particularly trying to avoid it. I figure I shall be exposed at some point. But if, I, if I'm hard to it and it can't get me, then I can't pass it on. And I become a fire break. It stops with me relatively. You know, if it jumps to me, no big deal, right? And for the audience, to Cliff's point here, even the normies now are talking about anywhere from 40% to 70% of the world population being infected. So it is most likely going to hit your doorstep. So at this point, seeing as there's no virus and we've seen procrastination or les calcitrants in French. Um, oh, the yeah. dithering. The, yeah, from the yeah. government. Anyways, they're, they're, it's just bit inaction and it's just words and words and words and they've been delaying and delaying. So this is the point. Well, of here's, here's the problem too. There is no vaccine possible. Yeah. Okay. In order to make a vaccine, basically what you do is you, you find a human body's reaction to a particular infection you find several people that have that same kind of infection that are all presenting the same kind of symptoms. You take their blood and you see if there's a common antibody in all of them. And if there is, you say, aha, uh -huh, this is the antibody for this set of symptoms. And thus a vaccine is created. You kill the virus, put it in, in eggs, or put it in eggs and grow it and then kill it and then give it to humans. After you pollute it with all kinds of other stuff because you're big pharma and you're evil. Uh, but um, beyond that, in this case, we have it presenting for HIV, SARS, MERS, and the coronavirus envelope itself. Now, here's some things that I, I started thinking about uh, right off the bat, just practical things. Vitamin C kills viruses. It kills viruses in three or four or five different ways. It kills them by preventing the spirochete attachment to cells, because as the, as the virus comes along and that spirochete finds a cell it wants to attach to, as it touches it, if your cells are hardened and full, maximally full of vitamin C, an electron donation takes place. You will actually literally have a chunk of vitamin C says, aha, a virus, and it tears a piece of electron from itself, gives it to the virus, and that breaks the virus open. It is literally a little micro charge that makes that virus split open and it's harmless. Your body then sends a white cell to pick it up and send it to waste. Correct. Okay, but it also can prevent um, uh, infection in a number of different ways. Not only hardening the cell and making your intercellular glue tighter, there's also this electron donation, but it also forms hydrogen peroxide. And the hydrogen peroxide, so as it's zapping that one cell with that, that electron donation, you get the formation of hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide in the body, made by the body, is hugely effective as an in-body disinfectant. And you can use hydrogen peroxide out the, outside the body, but this is not something you want to drink, guys. It, you've got to let your body make it via uh, vitamin C. Right. Now, so, so I knew that vitamin C was going to be able to be used this way. I figured that the, the first, my first shot at an effective dose was going to be optimal. I saw some of the other things, and I saw how the Chinese were treating it. Within, um, from like December 15th onward, I started seeing many reports on the dark web about uh, high doses of vitamin C being used on CCP party members, okay? And they were using this high, high dose vitamin C at the level for infected people of one in 200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, and they were having some success. At that same time, there was this big move towards a couple of other drugs that were being reported as being used, as well as double lung transplants for the uh, young party members that had had their lungs trashed because this, this virus actually causes a situation where your lung tissue dissolves. And that's the graying aspect of it, okay? That's the pneumonia, but it's a pneumonia that's very unique because the virus disables your, your antibacterial stuff in your gut, in your gut biome, and so you don't have antibacterial protection for bacterial pneumonia at the same time the virus is giving you viral pneumonia. And dangerous then, lethal combination absolutely lethal absolutely so hard to fight off so hard this was what killed so many people in 1918
they'd had damage, both soldiers and civilians, from gas attacks. And so their lungs were already under stress, sometimes with 30 and 40 and 50% reduction in lung volume, and then they got the flu. So the combination is absolutely lethal to have reduced lung function and be trying to fight things off. So then I started following the TCM guys uh, that were doing postings, and many of them disappeared. These are the heroes of Wuhan. Those guys, some of them weren't really tour literate, and I'm pretty sure they left trails they shouldn't have because they would post once or twice and they're gone. And then somebody would say, oh, well, so-and-so has disappeared. I can't reach them. And so it got, got really heartbreaking then. And that was over the cor course of January and then through February. And then I started getting really serious about what's the part about this. And I started seriously considering how to approach it and that we needed as adults to reference bioweapon and that the word needed to be uh, desensitized to us and we needed to have it because it points to a solution. And if we thought this was a natural virus, we wouldn't know that those solutions not, might necessarily exist for us. Mm -hmm. If it's a natural virus, nonetheless, it's susceptible to vitamin C and chaga, as well as any number of other antivirals. Okay, so, and there are approaches. So I'm, I've been uh, mentoring a couple of people in France and Holland that have had this, that were young men. One guy's 57 and the other's 51. And uh, they've been through the hard case of this because they had it, got over it, and then three or four or five days later, boom, they just collapse because their lungs are like um, uh, filled with cement, you know, that, and that pain that you just can't, you just cannot breathe. And um, uh, we are able to bring them out in only three days. And so far, everybody that's been on the Chaga Gangster um, protocol that has had this, none of these people have had to go to the hospital, which in this case, prognosis and going to the hospital is very, very, very bad. That's the last because place. The hospital is overwhelmed. Correct. They're overwhelmed. You won't get the, the treatment. Um, in China, when party members go to the hospital with this, no matter where they are on, in Chinese territory, they instantly start these guys on at least 100 uh, milligrams per kilogram injected uh, vitamin C. And this is what I needed to bring up to you. Okay. Right. So I, okay. You so real quick. Uh, I saw your, your vid, right? And you're recommending that you, and you'd say you take five grams. And, and that's good, but it's not enough. If you're talking about an ascorbic vitamin C and not a liposomal, you're only absorbing, absorbing one of those five grams you take every day. So you've got to kick it up four times. All right. I've been in, in uh, discussions uh, briefly through Vietnam and Laos and a few of these other connections to um, uh, Asia in terms of the web, the, the deep web. I am dis in discussions with individuals that had served as caretakers in Wuhan. One of them has finally made it to, to uh, their whole family uh, has gotten out, okay? And they were tending people that were in uh, ICU in one of the Wuhan hospitals. And uh, the family members went there and tended them every day, at least three hours, and none of the family members got sick, and they were taking 20 tabs a day. So more than one an hour for the hours that they were awake. Right. Uh, but, but all they had was just basically ascorbic, a uh, regular old super cheap vitamin C. This appears to be effective because it's continuous. All right. It's the same approach that dogs ha and cats have. Dogs and cats can get this, but they won't in the main unless they have a pre existing skin condition that prevents them from making the vitamin C at the base of their hairs, which is where the sunlight produces vitamin C in dogs. Now we've also discovered that vitamin D in conjunction at very high doses. Okay, so basically, strategically, the thing to do is to stomp on it if you get it. Instantly up your vitamin C very high, instantly go to two um, milligrams uh, every hour of dual extract chaga or a cup of tea every half hour, very concentrated, if, if all you've got is that, or one capsule every hour if you've got powdered uh, chaga. But put that with vitamin D, vitamin C, and vitamin A, lots of water and rest, and uh, treat the lung symptoms with either eusnea, uh, which is this little lichen, which is available all around the Northern Hemisphere, and, and or elderberry. Now, elderberry and eusnea also provide the slipperiness of the lungs. You will then be able to expectorate this stuff and get rid of that, that heavy, heavy, heavy feeling. And I've actually had reports from the 57-year-old and from the 51-year-old man after having come out of this on the third day, 
And uh, one guy was taking uh, 25 grams a day ascorbic, and the other was taking nine grams liposomal. And they're still continuing to, with that. The guy who was taking the 20 grams of the ascorbic has cut it down somewhat just because of the impact on his gut. But right. they're both, both feeling fine. They're both physically out enjoying being alive, uh, doing physical labor and getting their lungs moving again. And, uh, and so far, it appears they've avoided that terrible pneumonia lung damage. Now, if, if you get that, one last thing. Okay, yep. so should you get that and you're older like myself, you can take and you, have, and you think you've suffered some level of damage after recovery. I don't think it'll help during the process, but it may. I don't know if you get that bad. There's a peptide you can take called Taxorest, T-A-X-O-R-E-S-T. It's made in Russia. I've used it personally. In fact, I took one this morning. I take it intermittently, like um, I keep myself boosted up on it because I was a 17-year smoker, and it goes specifically to the lungs. And so I can still do uh, long meditation indraws and all of that, right? And I know for a fact that Taxo Rest works and I've had maybe 20 reports or 25 reports from older people that are taking it ahead of the game to get their lungs in shape. And they're, and they're within one or two or three or four or five days, they notice a big improvement. So there is another approach there, which is this hardening up aspect. I wanted to thank you because I just received in the mail to uh, the peptides for the cartilage. I have the same knee problems as you. So I'm about to start looking at that dose. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Too many oh, leg locks. <laughs> yeah, well, in, in my in my case, it's Cesar. You know, yeah, too many yeah, hours and twelve-hour meditations. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and think, look at all the sunsets you you see in the grappling arts that have had knee replacements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty hard on the knees. Okay, so let's get back track uh, just a little bit here for the audience. So, yeah. yes, I showed this yesterday. This was the vitamin C, and I said it was a thousand uh, milligrams per capsule. Right. So at so. Okay, so if I get this right, in, in ascorbic acid mode, your body's digesting about 20 to 30% max of it. Cool. So that's where, uh, for the audience, you need to do your math. Now, I also have um, in a Lipos bottle and the liposomal version, and that one is absorbed at around 90 to almost 100%. No, at 80%. 80%. Okay. Okay. Got to have a good uh, fudge factor for error. We want to be over these limits, right? Right. Very good. Okay, now for the uh, chocolate oh, stuff. So, just a second. So, I'm uh, almost 160 pounds exact. Um, you can figure out the kilos on that. And I'm quite certain at five liposomal grams a day, I'm covered. Okay. It's a lot of vitamin C. <laughs> if you're right. taking the pills, you're, you're, you're at 20, 20 pills or more here. But right. And it's a, okay, so it's also a gut issue, right? As you, okay, so here's the thing about vitamin C. If you're not used to it, you're going to get a gut reaction, loose bowels, all right? But as you take more and more of it, it hardens your system as it goes down. It basically gets used up first by the trachea, then by the stomach, then by the, the, the uh, internal organs, and it has to work its way through your intestines. And when it goes all the way through and you're hardened at least on that, then it starts applying itself to the rest of the system, and you won't have those gut issues anymore. You'll be able to just eat them like candy. Gotcha. Very good point. Now, on the chaga itself, for the dose... Um, uh, as a preventative measure, and then after uh, you get sick. What are the recommendations you've read right now in TCA? Okay, so what we derived, what Joe and I derived from his patients, because they were all taking slightly different doses for slightly different conditions. He was treating a couple, all right, now first you have to understand, TCM uses, traditional Chinese medicine uses mushrooms, but very rarely. They're not like the shamans, okay? They're not like the Siberians or the Native Americans here who rely on mushrooms as being very potent. Uh, so they're used sparingly. They're thought of as very potent over there. So he had, uh, of, his, of his 11 patients, he had two on the double extract. The rest were taking tea, and he was trying at, at that point to um, use that tea to affect various different conditions. It's good for the stomach. It's good for immune regulation. It's good for the skin, all different kinds of things. And so he was applying it for that. So some of them were taking various different um, levels of it because he doesn't like to over-medicate. That's one of the TCM things, right? Never still stress the body out. Ahimsa, do no harm. And so what we derived was that all of them, even the person on the weakest dose, had not had, they'd all been exposed. They were in downtown Wuhan in giant apartment buildings. And uh, none of them got the disease other than these two individuals. 
uh, but even the one on the lowest possible dose didn't get it. And uh, she was somewhat frail, 67, my age, and she was only getting 500 milligrams a day in a powder. Okay, she had a condition that I didn't, I don't understand, I never translated, but she just didn't take to the tea. So she was one of the people that was actually just taking a capsule every morning. Um, and so basically, we just determined that even for a weak 67-year-old woman who had other uh, underlying health issues, 500 milligrams of powder a day was sufficient to keep her going. None of these individuals, by the way, were taking supplemental vitamins, right? That is just not something that they do. So this one here uh, for the audience, this chaga from uh, Real Mushrooms, this is a thousand milligram uh, yeah. per dose. I, I, took that, I took that for months. I took right. that brand, brand for months. I liked it a lot. It was really good for the digestion. Um, uh, oh, I love stamets and stuff. Yeah. Right. No, Sarah likes okay. this one too. This is the stamets seven. It's a composite of seven different mushrooms. Yeah. Now let's, let's talk about this for a second, okay? okay? Because this is something that Paul and I have had um, uh, uh, disagreements about in terms of uh, approach. And he's more correct than I am, except in this specific. Okay, so specifically for chaga, you really do need to get it grown on birch trees. The reason, because Stamets' products uh, are grown on straw and other um, mycelial supporting substances, so they don't extract any of the triterpenes that are, that are essential. Now, the reason that, okay, so the first thing that clued me into chaga was, uh, or the reason I started this hunt, and then started talking to uh, Joe was because I ran across an article in which the uh, hint, the Indian assay of the protein was put to a computer program that looked for compounds that might make uh, them that virus dis, uh, disabled. Okay, so basically what they did was to take the Indians uh, uh, sequencing and run it through this software, admittedly in development, uh, not reliable. And they identified uh, 30 different compounds that would seem to fit within slots within that virus that maybe would do something. Okay, well, let me tell you, number 13 of those compounds, which clued right in, you know, July 13th, dying and all of that business, right? The 13th compound is a particular substance out of birch trees. And then I thought, aha, I've been go. drinking birch trees. <laughs> and eat birch trees by a chaga for years, right? For a year and a half at that point. And right. so that's when I started doing the research. That's when I found out that, that uh, chaga was powerful in antiviral and why that it was against the HIV replication, that it prevented the system from uh, being hijacked, the protease system, that it treated the thymus, that it helped regulate body temperature, blood pressure, and all this other stuff. And so it was like one of the perfect keys for this. And the reason I got onto it was because the, this study said that the birch tree compound would work. Now, you don't get the birch tree compound, unfortunately, in Stamets 7. It's gotcha. still good stuff. It's still good stuff. It's great antiviral. And it will prevent you, provide you with all kinds of antiviral components from the other mushrooms as well. But chaga is known as the supreme antiviral because it's like more than double any number, any of the other medicinal mushrooms in terms of the triterpenes and the other betalunic acids and the others that that affect the viruses. So question, in the host defense then, so I understand that these chaga mushrooms are not grown from the birch trees. Now, from host defense, they also sell the uh, chaga by itself in a compound. Now, is that the same case for that one? I, I, don't, I don't know. So users, be aware, do your research before that and look at um, right. organically grown on uh, birch trees uh, chaga, providence. Right. Chaga. That's what you want to look at. So, sure. thank you. And, and we have we have from North America, we have from East to West, we have Maine Chaga. There's a lot of them. But we have MainChaga.com. We have um, AnandaChaga.com in Canada, and we yeah. have Alaska. Uh, uh, AlaskaChaga.com. Then there's Oregon Mushroom, and, and there's a lot of places where there's birch forest, and people can harvest this stuff on their own. And a lot more of it's coming on the market now that it's been determined to be this valuable. Right. Very good. Okay, on topic number one, uh, we were going into the deep research and you've done a fantastic job. You went a lot further than I wanted to just for the constraints of time, but I thought it was so good information that I just let you run there. On the second, we've done that already in terms of the dosage, so thank you for that. Um, the third point oh, we oh, had oh, hang, hang on a second. Elderberry and, and Eusnea. I was just going to say, okay, so now we need to talk about dosage if you get it, okay? okay. So what has proved effective uh, if you get it is uh, 
upping your oral vitamin C to whatever you're taking now, at least double it right away and keep it, keep it going. If you're getting, if you go to a hospital, if you go to the hospital with this, insist, and they'll do it because they don't want to hassle. They don't want to fight with you, right? So they, they'll do it just to get you off their back insist on at least 100 micrograms per kilogram of injected vitamin C every six hours. That okay. is the, that's the only treatment that ever came out of China as getting recovery to the point where you don't test. Now they're giving them drugs and they can't find any, anything, in, but the people are not healthy, but they're not tested, right? At that time, prior to the new drugs, uh, vitamin C actually had people that were cured and they were, instead of spending three and four and five and six weeks in the hospital, they were out in eight and 11 days. So 100 um, milligrams per kilogram every six hours injected if you go to the hospital. They won't give you chaga. They probably won't do anything else. I doubt they'll give you vitamin D. But now if you get it, then you, what you want to do is you want to start taking a massive dose of vitamin D if you're not already on it, okay? So if you haven't taken vitamin D in the last year or, or something like that, get yourself one of these 40 or 50,000 unit vitamin D pills, gulp it down, gulp down some vitamin C, and then to treat the lungs um, and the rest of the body, take two milliliters of chaga extract in warm or hot water every hour for four hours. Now, don't take eight of them right off. You need to space it. What will happen is you'll take two if you've got the disease, in about 20 to 25 minutes, you'll feel the chaga infuse through your body and you'll start feeling spots of heat that is, that is similar to a fever, but different. Okay, so don't worry about it. If you have a fever, it may elevate that fever because one of the sneaky parts of this, this disease is that you get a fever, but the disease dampens how high it can get so it doesn't kill the protein. You need to get to 101.3 Fahrenheit. That's the word coming out of China to kill the protein in the body. So, so I've got people in Finland, they're gonna try and do it with um, saunas. Uh, and I'm gonna get a report from them, see how well that goes. But anyway, so the chaga may raise a, a fever, don't worry about it, it's necessary, it's required. You will feel this weird kind of heat. I felt it initially because I was so uh, filled with virus and infection from the surgery back after I got out of the cancer that for like four days, it was a constant flush getting rid of all of these infections that I picked up in the hospital. And so I'm familiar with that. It, it will pass, it's good. So you take chaga, 20 minutes later you get the heat, the heat lasts 15 to 20 minutes. It will gradually start lasting less and less time as there's less stuff to consume. And so you go four hours, two meals every hour for four hours, then you give yourself a four hour break and then come back to it if you still need it. If you're not starting to, usually what will happen is people will sleep. That's why I recommend the elderberry, okay? Elderberry acts like a uh, soporific. It is also providing for you the slipperiness to your lungs. Same thing with eusnea. Eusnea is powerful that way. I've used it myself, literally out in the woods, grabbing the, the moss and cleaning it off and then making this little sort of gelatinous tea. And it's tremendous, it's full of vitamin C itself, very powerful vitamin C, uh, and, it, and it makes your lungs slippery, and all of a sudden you start just coughing stuff up, whereas before it was unproductive and hurt. Uh, but elderberry and or eusnea both do this. They provide this slippery component to get rid of it. Those, elderberry is usually treated uh, uh, and as a liquid, one mil, and again, in the hot water. So this is a disease of the damp, so we must provide heat any way we can do it. But the, you don't want to, cover up with vast quantities of um, uh, covers. We want this heat to be internal going outward. Uh, right. you, want, you want to sort of like get as much air as you can in this process in a TCM kind of a sense, right? And so yeah. when you treat, you do the four mils of, or two mils four times uh, in the first four hours with the, the chaga once every hour, and then you do um, elderberry. But you'll find that most patients are going to want to sleep after they've been given the elderberry in the hot water. That's because it acts sort of like Zoloft. It makes you feel good, especially in combination with vitamin C and chaga. These are all synergetic. And you'll feel this rather pleasant um, relaxation and you'll be calm in spite of being ill. And if you feel the need to sleep, go ahead. If you're there by yourself, make sure you set an alarm so you get up and take the next batch of the, the chaga. Otherwise, if you're dealing with someone as a caregiver, wake them up to get the vitamin C and the chaga in them during that first four hours, but then let them sleep in those next four hours because the body only heals when we sleep. 
So in terms of the doses uh, for the audience, you know, go back to this video, rewind to the points and, and take note, you know, there's the pre uh, existing condition where you need to get your optimal levels and then there's the dosage for when you're actually sick. Here in Canada, obviously, we're asking people to self-isolate um, in, in the cases where they have symptoms and they're not so grave as to uh, needing uh, intubation or um, air oxygen. Um, so be weary now of the, the side effects that Cliff has, has uh, outlined for you. So the understand that these are going to happen and that this is a normal process of going through the, the heat built up here. Um, and also for the audience, uh, Cliff, I know you've put a lot of this already on your Twitter and what's the hashtag that people need to uh, plug into to get some of these recipes and these dosage that you've already talked about? Uh, I, I just labeled this as Chaga Gangster. Okay. okay. So it's hashtag Chaga or gangsta. Okay, I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, uh, because you know, because the normies aren't going to get it for a long time, and when they finally do, then they'll swarm in. I'm expecting any day now to start seeing enough reports coming out of ICU nurses that are on this protocol uh, that doctors will say, "Hmm, why aren't they sick?" <coughs> you know, maybe I better do what they're doing. <laughs> you know, that kind right. of thing. <laughs> So, Stupid uh, humans, they have to wait till the end until they move. <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, oh, and this brings up a, a couple of points, all right? Okay. Two things we need to get across, new information. Okay. All right. So, so or new concepts that we have to think about. If you're self-isolated, if you're in a family and somebody gets sick, you all have the disease, okay? So instantly start treating everybody there as though they were going to get it any day and start pumping them full of the... Uh, uh, mushroom, the vitamin C, and the vitamin D, and vitamin A if you've got it as well. These all work synergistically. You need not give them elderberry unless there's chest complaints. You can if you've got enough. It is also a straight antiviral protection on its own. So, so just treat the whole family because you've got a sick individual in the premises. And, Prime Minister and Trudeau's wife is positive. And in the press conference the other day, he says, oh, yeah, my wife's at home in isolation, or no, in quarantine, and we're here in isolation. I'm like, how does that work? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? So right. anyways, we'll leave, we'll leave that aside for now. But right. they, okay. and then, then one last thing. You're going to yeah. see a lot, of, a lot of people. There's a guy I like on, on YouTube, Chris Martinson. Yes, he does very good data. Right. Yeah. right, but he's, he's hung up on something. He's using a word that I find offensive. And I, the reason I find it offensive it's not his fault. He's not intending to be offensive, but he's not recognizing what we're dealing with. Okay. So he's assuming it's a disease and he's replicating this word that MSM is handing out as though it is a panacea. And that this is the word that's going to cause Britain to collapse. Herd immunity. There will be none. There are no antibodies. Once you get this, you can get it again. So you, you better really harden yourself seriously the second time. The HIV inclusion in this is very um, evil. Okay, because HIV hides in the spinal fluid and the brain fluid and emerges later. That's why chaga years ago in TCM was recommended because it regulates the ability of the virus to attach itself and replicate within those fluids. Eliminates it almost. So, um, so you have to be aware that this is a bioweapon. And if you think of it as a disease, you're going to treat it as a disease and you'll think that herd immunity will happen. And you'll just keep waiting for it as people keep dying. And the second time they get the disease, more die, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to understand, in my opinion, linguistics matter. You know, and, and as they matter, they matter more now than any time in history. And if I tell you it's a bioweapon and you use that word, then you're going to say, hmm, did they design in for human uh, herd immunity? Or did they design this to be epigenetically neutral and never cause antibodies to develop? That's where linguistic is so important to use the right words to get the people to respond the correct way to the information they're getting. So thank you very much. We can, we can win against a bioweapon. Yeah. All right. So, so there's no problem there. I'm saying all the good humans will survive this and we will eradicate this disease. I'm waiting actually for someone in South America to come up with a plant extract that will kill this in the environment. And I'm certain it'll come out of there because there's so many compounds down there that are antiviral just kicking around in the dust. And uh, there's just like the birch forest. If you go into a birch forest as an explorer, and you're told, or not as an explorer, it's like a lab assistant, and you're told to go find bacteria and 
viruses in a birch forest, you're going to be very hard pressed to find it, even down over 18 inches into the soil. That's incredible. Okay, so, yeah, so we need something that, and I'm certain we'll find it in a forest, probably in South America, maybe Africa, and uh, it will present us the solution to the eradication of it in the environment. And then as we're hard, happenstance encounters won't hurt us. And we'll just kill the thing and not worry about it. Then we can go on to who did it and, and what we're going to do about that. Yeah, I keep hearing people about having those discussions. It's not time for that now. Right now, it's time to survive and do what we need to do for our friends, our families, and ourselves and take responsibility. That's what we need to do right now. And we could get to that later. And those fuckers, if they're still alive, <laughs> we'll, get, yeah, we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah, if, if they survive and if they right. don't, they're, they're into their destiny. So right. let them we spent a lot of time now on the defense part. Let's just finish and round up this interview, Cliff, on the opportunity. We were talking about the Linsel Dagmar earlier. Now, you've made a lot of comments, and I love what you're talking about, uh, you know, as official dem breaks down, and we're seeing it live before our eyes right now. We see it in Iran. We're seeing it in Italy. A lot of this was forecasted in your Alta reports a long time ago. Where's the opportunity for the Chaga gangsta to not only survive this, but then look at the opportunities. I know for one thing, you want to claim Area 51, you want to go get your TR3B, <laughs> <laughs> little floaty outside right, RV. Right. Yeah. So let's right. talk about that and give a little bit of encouragement to people to say, yeah, we're going to get through this. We can get through it together as long as we're responsible. But here's some of the opportunities that we can look for, whether that's the financial system, whether that's the official bill going well, over and creating let's, a let's, new yeah, life. Let's just look at the financial system briefly, okay? Um, in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, the move was made by Western elites to raise China up to the number one nation on the planet product, in, in production. And we put all of our eggs in the Chinese basket. Well, the Chinese basket is now broken. So it does not matter what nation you are in. All you have to do is say, what did we used to buy from China? And then just decide, oh, I like making that. I'm going to make that here. Yeah. You know, I'm a good machinist. I'm a good agriculturalist. Uh, you know, I'm good at textiles or whatever, and then just start about making it because we have to. They're, we're never going to get goods from China again. The, the CCP continues to lie to their people, to themselves, to the party itself. They continue to lie, and they're still dying. I'm still getting stuff out of Wuhan saying the second wave is going through now. And if, we're, if it's correct, if some of this stuff coming via Vietnam and the deep web is correct, maybe 80% of the people maybe 80% of 15 million people will die in over these next few months or have died already in that one city. I'd love you to address that because in the last two weeks, I've seen multiple reports, oh, China's back online, everything's great, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, stop. Please talk about that. And their case has just been up today. Of course, we can't look at the numbers since the beginning. They've been fudging them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You need some, some real eyes on China. You can use the satellites. Hang on a second. Please. Go ahead. So guys, as uh, Cliff is just uh, entering the door here, uh, you can see his website at halfpasshuman.com and you can also um, follow his tweets uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can find him at Cliff underscore high. And he's been, you know, super busy for the last three months, pumping out all the information and the research that he's done on this. And um, it's like having a crystal ball. I mean, he was saying things in January and even up until December that, of course, was completely denied in official them. And step by step by step, where Cliff was bringing us to his thought process and his research on Twitter, we were found to, to prove him right two or three weeks later. And this has been a continual process. So you need to use your mind here and look at people's track record. Even here in Canada, they've been lying to us, you know, or at least not admitting, or at least being incompetent for the last couple of weeks as well, telling us it was just a, a virus and that there was no problem. And then today we're just announcing an $85 billion uh, package deal to help Canadians get through it. And, and we're announcing quarantines and we're, we've just closed the border with, uh, with Canada. A month ago, I posted um, a warning picture on my website and what I was looking for in Canada, and this was when we just had the first case in British Columbia and one in Toronto, I was looking for community spread. And I knew that at the moment the officials here announced that we had community spread, the following things were going to happen. 
empty shelves, panic buying, and eventually quarantine. And I said, it's been happening in every other country in the world. Why would Canada be any different? And I got a lot of flack for it. Uh, Cliff, you're back. Thank you. I got a lot of flack for it on, uh, on Facebook. Everybody's like, oh, come on, you're, you know, you're, you're, it's fear porn and all that. I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. I'm looking at the data here. And obviously, we are here now today. So if you watch that, that, that uh, um, notice or advertising I put a, a month ago, a warning, sorry, not an advertising, you see that it's all here. So we can extrapolate where this is going based on what's happening in Italy and Iran and now in Europe. So please take action and please follow Cliff. He's been doing such an amazing job putting out this data and all the research for free. <laughs> He's doing a great job for humanity. And a lot of it, it just it keeps getting proven day by day by day. So thank you, uh, Cliff, for getting back over here. Yeah, I, I've got a I've got a delivery showing up, so okay. Uh, I'm still trying to prepare for relatives, and I'm trying to get relatives out of the hardest hit areas and make everybody safe because we're gonna have a so we have a social breakdown now. It's already occurred. No no point in saying it's in the future, and so the societal breakdown will follow its own path. I doubt it'll be like any science fiction movie or any science fiction book you've ever read but it will nonetheless be devastating. It'll occupy all of us for the rest of our lives, no matter how long you're going to live. Um, and it's something that the world changed, uh, probably back on October 29th or something when the virus escaped, and we just didn't know it. And it just took us a while to figure it out. A lot of us have figured it out ahead of the normies, ahead of the politicians. So we, we can get back really quickly to the issue of the economy. Any person that has an entrepreneurial bent now needs to start looking at the production of real goods. If they can, can solve problems, universe will reward them. If they solve big problems well, universe will reward them massively because we've got nothing but big problems and there's, you're gonna stumble on anywhere and they're gonna be um, occupying you for years, but success is inevitable if you don't stop and you don't quit and you just keep engineering and engineering, you'll get that solution, it will work for you. So we have to replace all of China's manufacturing. They have to replace it for themselves. You can get, as I was saying, you can get eyes on China if you'll use the freely available satellites. Mm -hmm. and you can see that there's no pollution in China that's come back. Even North Korea all shut down. In fact, it's like there's more production, industrial production um, and heat sources in um, uh, some small island in Indonesia than all of China. All right, so, so, so a single small volcano burping in the Philippines is gonna produce more carbon dioxide now visible on the satellites than all of China. They're that shut down. Yeah. So our, our situation is that our economics are gonna to have to be rebuilt. We're gonna to have to rebuild an entirely different uh, distribution system. As I said in all those reports, warehousing is gonna be important because we're gonna to have to store the stuff here because we won't be having shipping just in time, all of that kind of business. We won't have the Peter Drucker continuously revolving warehouse inside of a truck concept anymore. Now, as to the elites and the political stuff, we are witnessing that now. And as somebody who has a bent towards politics and a bent towards law, you'll appreciate where we're at. Many of these, okay, so the nature of this disease is that it gets into your throat and it replicates in your throat and you're unaware of it. And you breathe it out and it is airborne in a way droplets are not. So you don't have to cough, you don't have to sneeze. It also, unlike an ordinary disease, this bioweapon is more infectious in you before you're symptomatic than afterwards. So it is designed for you to act as its host to, to infect others. It's designed to make you the, the murderer of the people around you. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. All of the elites practice this close communal contact lifestyle that gives them their power. As, as politicians, the, the glad handing, the slap on the back, the close contact is right. required. Right. And that's going to that's gonna kill so many of them, especially since so many of the political and uh, financial elites are old. Yeah. And they're going to be the one of the prime targets of this. So under the circumstances, we can imagine, just pick a number. We can say 30%, we can say 50%, 70% of all the political leaders right now are dead or will be dead before the end of the year. If they're over a certain age, if they've been within this period of time exposed to it. Because they, they're not the kinds to supplement. 
they're not the kinds to have the personal doctors that would insist that they supplement. And unless you do these kind of things as a rule, unless you're basically a martial artist and you're always hardening your body, you're, you're not going to be prepared for this. And so you've got to, you're behind the curve and you're going to catch up. And a lot of these guys are just simply going to perish. Uh, that's going to leave huge gaps, not only in uh, personnel, in the uh, political infrastructure, but also within the policy makers, the decision makers. So it is at this time, curiously, at an equinox that we approach this. And an equinox is interesting in the TCM viewpoint because equinoxes and solstices are used by Chinese medicine because as the planets align, they create unique um, um, circumstances within our bodies as little miniature ecosystems. Okay, so at an equinox, we are in balance. Uh -huh. So that's the time to seek to balance everything and get your harmony involved. It also is a time when everything being in balance, it's very easy to tip things over, to push us in new directions. So we can at this point, all the chaga gangsters, we can decide that when they first start noticing us, when the Norbies start saying, hey, why are you doing so well? We can have that handout ready. Maybe they won't listen, they might read it, you know? Or maybe a doctor comes along or an authority figure and sees that, oh, look, you know, all of your nurses are out there kicking butt in this other hospital, they're dragging around and they're symptomatic. And, you know, maybe we'd better, and you, then that's when you stand up and say, if you want this done, you better let me do it. As a nurse, let that nurse teach the others, get these other people out of it, and then teach the doctors, right? That's my biggest fear at this stage. If, if we don't get the um, rampage of this bioweapon under control within the healthcare system, specifically the personnel that work there, the rest of us are screwed. We'll die of bad teeth, broken bones, you know, all different kinds of weird stuff because there isn't a medical system. Let's go back to Chris Martinson at the Peak Prosperity. So he's also been doing due diligence and research on the uh, flattening the curve as we speak so that we don't overwhelm um, our, uh, our medical systems. And so far in other countries, they, they really haven't done a good job flattening the curve. And we see the results of that now in the HLD too. The doctors were saying, if you had told me a month ago that the whole hospital would be ICU, <laughs> I would have said you're crazy. But now, of course, that's the reality today. And that's what's coming here now. And all the measures or the lack of taking emergency measures three weeks ago is eventually going to cause that same peak here. I, I believe so far our authorities are saying that the window is closing for flattening the curve. I think it's probably already closed and they're just kind of slowly getting us used to that fact. So, and that's the problem. As the whole um, um, healthcare system is down, people are coming in for heart attacks or anything else, they just won't get the, the, the care they deserve. And so it is a big problem and it is. Well, there's another aspect of that too is that the doctors are dying. In, you know, in, in Italy, I hear that now 30% of all the physicians are symptomatic. Yeah, I saw it's already, that. It's already happening in Washington State. It's yeah. gotten so bad now that they're bringing in uh, hospital ships to New York. I hear that physicians in New York are, are double using or triple using ventilators because they don't have enough, which means it goes from one infected patient to another infected patient because they simply don't have enough gear. Yeah. All right. So, so I look at it this way. I know for a fact that I've kept at least nine individuals with severe uh, COVID out of the hospital system with my treatment. They've corresponded with me. We've, we've worked them through. I get up in the middle of the night if they were having anxiety and uh, had phoned me and we got them through. So they didn't burn, the, uh, burn into the hospital system resources. I know that I'm not going to. <clears throat> None of the people in my family are going to because I'm prepared to treat here to keep them right up to that, and they won't get it with the vitamin C. That's the big thing. So you get the vitamin C in there and the chaga, they won't get it. If you do happen to have a little case of it at the time that you start this, it will be mild. You'll never progress with it. And you'll probably never, ever, ever get it again because you'll feel so good taking vitamins and chaga that you'll never want to stop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, for those of us who do supplement and who remember a time where we did, it was like, what the fuck I think you should have been doing <laughs> So now, so now what I'm doing is I'm uh, continuing on, keeping on. I have to leave in a few minutes here. I've got a, another meeting I've got to get to lawyers. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, uh, and I'm keeping on with this. Uh, I'm not trying to be a documentarian. I'm trying to be a TCM practitioner remote to come up with the formulas to kick these things out such that people can benefit from them and then provide as much information as I can 
backfilling behind me so that if you have people that are anxious about this approach because they've been brainwashed against supplements, it right. will give them some peace of mind. Now, the best peace of mind is to take the chaga and feel good. <laughs> so, you know, but, but that's really the, the route. Now, real briefly, I do have a, a formula that I developed on my own that I used in my recovery from cancer because I had suffered muscle wasting disease. I had lost, I was uh, 158 at the time that, that uh, I really uh, went into a downward spiral, a spiral. I'd lost 20 pounds of muscle mass in less than three months just before the surgery. And so I needed to build that back. Not an easy thing to do as an old man. So I came up with a formula that works while you're sleeping at night. It makes you sleep better. It's called Cliff High's Pure Sleep. We're, we're sold out. Uh, we could only get uh, bags, 60, pound, or 60 days supply bags because of the supply chain issues. We're making other batches. It's sold at purebulk.com. You can go in and uh, check it, that site there. If you need vitamin C and chaga and stuff, uh, you can get that at Pure Bulk as well. Use my name uh, with one F, C-L-I-F-H-I-G-H, all in caps, and you get 10% off. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get some kind of um, an affiliate money out of that. I don't know what it is. I don't need money. I'll turn it around and give it away to somebody. Um, uh, so, but I'm doing it so everybody can get the 10% and they can find another source. I love the guys at Pure Bulk. Uh, Tim McNulty, is a, he's a bodybuilder and a martial arts kind of guy for years and years and years. So um, anyway, so there is that. Um, the herd immunity won't happen. We have para immunity. That's what dogs and cats have. Uh, with their vitamin C. And, and basically what it means is para immunity means that the body's innate defenses rise up to meet the challenge without the, the having to involve an immunoresponse protein, which is the antibody. Right. Oh, so, the, so as viruses get further down in the fur on a dog and a cat, more vitamin C is there to zap them. So that's, that's para immunity at a, at a real high level. Um, anything else you need to ask? No, I mean, you've covered it. Thank you so much for all your time. You've been so generous. And I want to thank you on behalf of everyone who's listened to you and, and, and seen this information come in and who were struggling with the news and with the, the uh, with cognitive yeah. dissonance and all that. You've, you've done such a great job helping these people go through that. And I know now, and you've explained that that is no longer part of your job is to explain the, the, the problem that's on the horizon. We're past that now. <laughs> we're looking at the solutions and we're looking at rebuilding. And I, I, I'm so honored that, that you've offered me this interview. And, and I know that people listening to you will heed your advice and, and, and look at the opportunities that are coming for us as well, the Chaga Godsters, into recreating this world for us and let those old farts die off. <laughs> and the old farts die off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, dead doctors don't supplement. Neither, neither do dead politicians. Exactly. Exactly. Well, 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 I, I do the traditional live long and prosper. <laughs> yeah, I actually say this is a, a native thing around here. It's with respect. Right. With respect. With and respect. Yeah. And yes. With respect and with respect. I love you, Cliff. Thank you so much. I hope you and, uh, and Kathy are well and, and stay safe. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. You're going to go on YouTube with this, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I might I have to send me a link and I'll to it just so I see your. Sure. Uh, using stuff like that but yeah it's going up to youtube yeah. and it's also going to the the, the dojos as well cool yeah. okay thank you very much for the opportunity thank you cliff have a great day bye bye